After the Blood Angels painting video, I told you that I was worried that I was going to be hooked and that I'd have to start a new army. I asked which of the models was your favourite and well over a thousand of you voted, with the overwhelming majority being in favour of the grimdark style inspired by Trovarian miniatures. Yeah, yeah, but what is today about then? Friends, join me on part two of the Blood Angels journey, as today, today we start my dream army with the very first squad. The problem that I normally have with jetpack models like these Inceptors are the little clear plastic flying stands. I get it, I absolutely get it, but I'm happy to go the extra lengths here and try and find a replacement that I think you will find pretty cool and that will look thematic and great. More on that later though, because I'm going to get started on the Marines first. This video and what I expect will be a small series of episodes spread out over the next 12 months isn't a guide to painting Blood Angels. I mean, you will learn to paint them like this if you're keen, but my goal is to purely entertain you and have you as company on this journey. So whether you are painting Blood Angels, painting a different army, or you're just looking for a place to unwind, welcome. I've picked out Inceptors for a few reasons, and I'm going to talk you through them whilst in the background I'll be starting off the models with a sub-assembly for painting ease, black prime, and then my favourite sponge stippling technique for the red armour. So Inceptors. Well for my army I've accepted that I won't be able to collect every Space Marine model, so I'm going to target a particular theme for my force. I like the idea of jump pack infantry, dreadnoughts and some fun characters. This should be an entertaining, aggressive style of Space Marines and pair well with the rest of the armies in our gaming group. I'm not considering what is and isn't competitive. I would much rather have an army that interacts around the centre of the board and entertains my opponent by being thematic. There are only three models in the box, so it could be a cheeky, easy win to start my adventure, and I've built them with the Plasma Exterminator weapon variant because it will allow me to test the grimdark scheme with a glowing effect to make sure I'm happy with all the colours I've picked out for it. Now this isn't the kind of paint scheme that you'd find in a codex from the GW team, nor is it that amazing vibrant retro scheme that we hold so dear. The idea here is to be different to what everyone else is putting down on the table whilst telling my story. The story I have is that this force has been suffering on a dark, hostile world and suffered many casualties in an arduous campaign. The Marines in this army will be all that is left, cut off from resupply and using violent shock tactics to ambush their foe. To think that over the last couple of years I've collected, built and painted armies for Orcs, Death Guard, Tyranids and Knights, but never even looked twice at Space Marines. For me, I think that's because every player I came across appeared to be collecting them and I didn't want to play them in tournaments because I genuinely wanted to offer my opponent a different experience. Every meta is different, but the tournaments I attended had around 50% or more players building Space Marines. Maybe I was just playing during a period of marine dominance though. Either way, I enjoyed that my opponent will go from two games against morale destroying meta marines to facing a thematic list of orc buggies, colourful death guard demon engines, or chittering hordes of bugs. Same as last time, and I'm loving the dark blacks and browns to bright reds and orange contrast on the armour. It's early on, but already I know I'm going to be happy with these. The large reinforced Mark 10 power armour has so much room for this effect to be achieved. It would be rude not to try something different to the standard plain red smooth armour panels. You don't have to follow the law exactly. In fact, I would encourage you to shift some things around a little to make your force unique to you. In my previous video, someone told me that the Marines shouldn't have black knees or black shoulder trim, but I think it looks cool and it's an accent that breaks up all of the red, so I'm doing it. The black shoulder trim for me is going to be something that the Marines have added onto their armour to honour their fallen comrades during the campaign. The Sergeant will have a single left black shoulder pauldron with the Blood Angels insignia. This is to denote him as the veteran, but also it helps me pick him out in the squad when he's on the table. 
I'm going to customize squads in the army with the chapter upgrade pieces like this shoulder pauldron. And I'll also shop around for some custom designed parts each time I plan for a new squad. Metallics will be simple and dark using lead belcher as the base and then a coat of known oil over the top. When I'm painting squads, I work on an assembly line for efficiency. I'm picking one color and then painting this on each model in the squad before I move on to the next color. I want to use decals across the army because I'm happy that I've found a way to make them look great. Again, I don't need an exact match to the law, but I can jump online or even have a look through the codex and get an idea of what squad markings would suit them best. From the Imperial Knight's Armages transfer sheet are some small white skulls, and I think these could look cool on the knee pads. Having skulls feature in the army design will further sell the morbid mood that I want for these marines. Good time to mention that if I haven't explained the painting steps in detail enough for you to use as a step-by-step -step thorough guide, then at the end jump across to my Blood Angels painting guide, which is lighter on the entertainment and heavier on the processes. Now that's also a cheeky way to get my views up. There's layers to this people, I'm over here playing chess, not checkers. I'll try this decal adapter from AK Interactive today, because I stumbled across it in my box of goodies when I was looking for the decals. I'm waiting for the transfer to dry, so I find odd little jobs like painting decorations and also the eyes. I know that the regular marine lenses look is more detailed and iconic, but I really like the glowing simplicity of a thin down fluorescent green over the top of the white. What makes these Inceptors so special when compared to standard marines? Well, they are equipped with these heavy jump packs and the idea being that they plummet to the surface from the very edge of a world's atmosphere. On the tabletop, this means they can appear anywhere on the battlefield and unleash a torrent of plasma fire on an unsuspecting enemy. They can't win the battle on their own though, and they play a role of being close support to the battle line squads required to locate, take and hold objectives for victory. I'll talk a little about weathering these symbols to help them blend into the armour panels. I've started with a thin down wash of Seraphim Sepia over the top, and if I decide that I want it a bit heavier in some areas, I can apply a second or a third coat. Thinning down some different browns and using them as a grime wash. Now initially my plan was to paint that chest area with black and dark greys, however I wasn't completely happy with how it looked. So I've changed it up on the fly and I've instead gone with bone colours. I really like this and I'm going to keep it because it's a way of adding another colour without it being overwhelming. Sponging some of the red across the symbols to provide the illusion that the paint has been chipped away. Then I can come back with a small sharp brush and add some lines between the chips and also some scratches in random sections. With a shade or two lighter from the selection of reds, I'm painting the lower edge of some of the bigger areas to make them look three dimensional. Repeating the process with black paint and just creating some very small chips on the skulls. I need to keep these small, otherwise I will start to transform the shape and it won't be as obvious that it was a human skull. Speaking of overwhelming, it's time to discover a substitute for the clear, thin plastic flight stand. I'm jumping online and looking at places like eBay, Etsy, and sites that have 3D parts created by really talented designers, and I might just find something that I haven't considered. I love that these stands have a grotesque amount of exhaust billowing from them. That looks so cool. I picture a deafening battlefield with thick plumes of smoke. It can still be a bright, vibrant plasma color, but the pollution from this is really dark. I think I will end up with a dark colored base design for the Blood Angels, but for now I'm adding sand as rubble and I'm also gluing some around the lower third to try and sell the effect that the plumes are projecting with such force that the ground and debris are being kicked up and strewn all over the place. Acrylic white ink applied with a brush anywhere that I want to be glowing hot then with the airbrush, I'm spraying the surrounding areas where the glowing light will be cast and reflecting. 
Same for the smoke plumes. They will end up being quite dark, but I want some bright glow in the recess areas and then black on the raised. I back and forth with some different plasma glow color ideas and honestly I think green, pink, purple, orange or yellow could have looked fantastic, but I couldn't turn down blue. I think it will pair so well with the red armor and the black base. I've airbrushed over the white sections and then any areas that I want to be even hotter, well, I just return with the white ink and a thin brush and add this back in. In between the plasma coils is a great area to show the extreme heat. Using a large brush, I reintroduce the black around the lower third of the smoke plumes and completely cover the model. Then as I work my way up, I'm using a dry brushing technique to catch the raised areas. I figure that the exhaust is cooling at this distance and closer to the jetpack ports are where it's still glowing hot. Shall we see how they turned out? I really like these, like really like them. I feel as though I've put about a year's worth of thought into how I would like a Blood Angels army to look if ever I started one. I think that a 2000 point size force painted in this style could look great on the tabletop. They have fought by the Emperor's side since the beginning. They are considered amongst the most noble and they seek to protect the weak and vulnerable. Yet this deep sense of integrity and honor is scarred by a curse they conceal from all outsiders and they strive to resist. This law is a big reason why I don't simply want bright red power armored marines standing atop goblin green bases. This was my youth and I loved it, but now I want to capture their grim history and paint them in a way that has you asking the question, are they actually the good guys? I'll still be making my normal videos, but every now and then I'd like to make one that continues the Blood Angels new army journey. Would you be interested in watching if I continued? And we're at the end of the video. Thank you so much again. If you're looking for ways to support the channel, the best thing you can do is watch more videos and give the ones that you do enjoy a like. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can consider that. And we also have a members section as well if you're in a position to contribute financially. Either way, thank you so much for your support and your kind words that you leave in the comments, and I look forward to seeing you on the next one.